again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki with my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., alongside University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Congratulations on an opening night win at Hard Rock Stadium against Alabama Birmingham. Thank you. To, to us, that was a big game, too. It was a big game because it was our first game. Uh, the big game is always our next game. But uh, I thought the guys played with great energy, um, great passion. The attitude on the sideline was, was terrific. Uh, we knew UAB had a really good team. They provided some adversity, um, but our guys never flinched, never blinked, and um, and I thought we played pretty solid. Um, you know, didn't finish great in the fourth quarter, but that's a learned you know process on how to play with a lead like that. But uh, but not a lot to pick at from that first game. Manny, any time you can rush the football for 337 yards, it's a great day. Yes. No matter who the opponent is. Talk to us about the, the success of that, the offensive line and all the backs and the quarterback that was involved in that success. Yeah, that UAB team went to Tennessee a year ago and Tennessee did not have 330 yards of total offense. Right. Um, so to run it for 300 at the end of the three quarters was quite a statement. We were gonna run the football. And, you know, we talked about it all off season. We weren't kidding people. We're gonna, we were gonna be simple on offense. We, we were extra simple in game one so our guys weren't confused so they could play fast, um, get lined up and let our tempo and our physicality wear down a very good defensive football team. And when you do that, just the standard of being, you know, running the ball, there's gonna be some short gains, some short gains, and then you're gonna pop one, uh, you're gonna pop another one. And, and our players could tell as the game wore on, they could see the fight coming out of UAB as they imposed their will. Coach, I thought one of the interesting parts of the game, uh, Cameron Harris, the big game that he had, over 100 yards rushing. But Don and I talked about it. Uh, in the offseason, he seemed to take ownership of a leadership role. And then the very first game, actually the first big play, he backs it right up with a 66-yard touchdown run and ran hard all night long. Isn't that cool? I mean, isn't that the way you really would want it to be? Yeah. Um, that's just college football. You know, DJ Dallas had to wait till Travis Homer left, right? And then DJ took over. And then DJ left and Cam knew it's my time. And uh, he's got these two great young running backs behind him. And that's pushed him to make him even better. Cam, as I've mentioned many times this year, as hard, if not the hardest worker in our weight room. And you just want to see the game reward your hardest workers. And to have a guy like that pop up, a really big run when we needed a spark, obviously a critical situation on the fourth down. Um, I think that got everybody really excited. You know, Manny, when the spread offense or Rhett Lashley was introduced, everybody thought it was going to be a, a, a touchy-feely deal where you proved on Thursday night it's physical football. And I, you know, we'll go back to Cam again. There was a couple runs where he didn't try and get out of anybody's way. He literally ran over people. But that's the mindset of what's being implemented here. It is. I thought all of our backs ran really hard. Um, but we do have to mention our offensive line. Please. Um, I thought those guys played outstanding. Garen Justice has really transformed those guys in a year mentally and physically. Um, they were young. You know, part of it is just, is just growing up and, 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 and maturing as players. But those guys really enjoyed getting after it. They love seeing those rushing yards. They love seeing backs that know that if they can stay on their blocks, that they can break plays and make big things happen. So a great reward for them because, you know, they had – they had had so many questions asked about them. This is game one. There's still a lot to improve on, but it was good to see them get some reward for their hard work in the offseason. Derek King did not disappoint. He lived up to the hype. Uh, I think maybe his middle name is Houdini. He made some spectacular runs, was able to spin out of one. Uh, we had two guys around him, by the way. Uh, from a play-by-play -play perspective, you really need to come up with adjectives in a hurry <laughs> to describe the things that he can do. But he was really, really good. Yeah, well, we had an idea. You know, in our scrimmages, he's not live contact. So we were basically playing touch on him, which really benefited the defense because there were some plays that he got touched that he would have gotten out of, which we saw him get out of for the first time last Thursday night. So creates a lot of problems. Number one, it's an extra gap in the running game. You have to account for him in the running game. And then even in the throwing game, UAB came out, played a very different defense than what they had shown on film from the opener or from any of 20 of 19. Uh, a lot more bump and run man coverage. And the issue in man coverage is when you match up everybody in the, in the back end, there's no one on the quarterback. And ultimately, that's what ended up happening is that if there was no one he felt good about throwing the ball to, he could take off and run. And there were some really explosive plays um, on some scrambles. 
Manny, the, touch, the touchdown rings came out. They were unveiled. And when Derek scored, I saw that he gives them to his offensive lineman. And then I watched the game again, and I watched throughout the game, his offensive linemen are always picking him up. So in one week or you know a short training camp, the relationship that has been built there, sometimes those things take years, and he has built that bridge in an awful short time. Yeah, that is really just who he is as a person. Um, I've said it before, but it seems like after every practice, um, he'll be sitting there on the practice field with four or five guys, and they're always four or five different guys, and I don't even know what they're talking about, but he's just they're just making connections. And, you know, look, the, 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 the personality of the quarterback is going to end up being in some way the personality of the football team. And for, we, we saw what he can do physically, but it's, it's the connection he has with, our t- with his teammates that I think really make him special. I thought one of the uh, big parts of the game, especially in the second half, was Brevin Jordan getting involved, coming alive in the passing game. Uh, what kind of impact did he have, and why is that impact going to be so important as we move forward? Well, Brevin's is a matchup nightmare. You know, and I mentioned that they were playing a lot of man coverage. You know, and uh, you know he's a tight end. Do you play him with a safety? Do you try to play him with a linebacker? I mean, that's what that's what good tight ends do. They create problems for defense. And um, we got Brevin out on some eye control plays. You know, uh, we slipped him out on a corner route that no one covered him. Derek made a great throw to kind of back shoulder it because they were scrambling back out to the corner to cover it. Um, that got us down to about the five yard line, and then we started a drive with a with a naked bootleg. Where again, they they got the rise in the wrong spot. A good tight end is going to catch it. A, a tight end like Brevin is going to turn up, break a couple tackles, and turn it into an explosive play. And the whole key to that tempo offense is kind of playing downhill. When you get that big first play to start a drive, you kind of really can start to roll your momentum and impose yourself on the defense. Manny, you, Rhett Lashley talked about, well, last year actually you had the number two highest amount of plays run as an average in college football. You were at, it depends how you count, you are at 78 or 83, depends on what counts or was it doesn't count. But that number's right about where you wanted to be as far as a play count goes. It is right around there. And, and really in the fourth quarter, we didn't stay on the field very right. well on offense. So that could have been a 90 real easily. And, and what we told our players is that every ball, every time that ball is being snapped, in the first quarter, second quarter, you are adding snaps to that defense's lungs and to their legs. And sooner or later, it's like a boxer, and you just – we actually use this imagery with our players. It, it was – we were not going for the knockout with UAB. We were going to body blow UAB um, until they went down and the referee stood in front of them. And that's really what ended up happening through the course of the game. We, we want to be more explosive. We want to hit some shots down the field. But, but we kind of set our minds to – to kind of aim for the rib cage and the kidneys and, and go to work on that and see what happens. For long stretches of the game, they could not move the ball. Your defense played really good. I looked at Don at one point and said, man, the defense not letting them move. They had one one drive, I think, in the, in the third quarter, of course, the short field. But for the most part, uh, were you pleased with the way your defense played? I thought our defense showed a renewed spirit in terms of running to the ball and being physical at the point of attack, which is really what we had talked about all offseason. We felt like we didn't have it at all times um, a year ago. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I think five three and outs, I think three three and outs in a row in the second quarter, especially when our offense was still kind of finding their way, which is really big to get the ball back um, to, to Derek. Um, and just and just on the line of scrimmage, you know, making things happen. Of course, there's always going to be a play that, or a drive that we're upset about, but over the course of the night, a very good start. Tackled very well, too, which is so crucial in an opener. You know, compared to the other team, we were by far the better tackling team. Coach Nessa Silvera, in my opinion, the most energetic game he's played. I don't know if it's his best game. It's the most tackles that he's had. You would be the judge if it was his best or not. But he that was a different person. He chased that football from sideline to sideline like I've never seen him do it before. Yeah, he. Um, if, if it wasn't his best game, it was tied for his best game. I thought he was outstanding. But we have to remember this now. This defense sees this offense every day in practice. Right. So all of a sudden, when the game slows down, they're like, wow, this is fun, you know, because, you know, they, they see how hard it is to go up against that tempo. So our conditioning level as a football team is really, really good. Um, and I think that allows our players on defense to really push the envelope and go harder than they've ever gone before because they know they've got a little extra in the tank. We've got to talk uh, more about the defense in a moment. But I guess just saying defense uh, from this perspective, you got a big game coming up on Saturday with a team that really likes to run the football. 
uh, with a really good running back. He had eight 100-yard games a year ago. But while you're trying to gang up on the run, they got a bunch of wide receivers that give them a lot of big plays. So they create some problems, don't they? They do, but their number one problem, again, if, if you can't stop the run, then it's going to be a bad day at the office. Um, they are probably the best outside zone running football team in the country, if not the best, one of the best. Um, it's what they've hung hang their hat on. Scott Satterfield, even going back to when he was at App State. Um, and so we actually saw that UAB was very similar in, in a lot of aspects. Um, so it was a good sort of uh, dress rehearsal. There were some things we did well uh, versus that play, some things we did not do well versus that play. So uh, our guys can see the corrections. We can make them this week and, and hopefully even put together a better performance on Saturday because we'll need it. Coach Bradley Jennings, first start as a Miami Hurricane, a guy that has just had a big mountain to climb since he got here. But at the end of the day, he looked very, very comfortable, was one of the leading tacklers on, on the squad. And how, what was he like after the game, and how, how has he been since the game? He's been – he's so happy. I, it just – it was a long road back for Bradley. You know, I, again, I always mention Wayman Steed as well. Um, there was a time when it was not for sure that, that, that they'd be able to play football again, you know, and um, – that's tough, you know, and, and they persevered through that. They found a way. They continue to get better. Again, a, a lot of credit to our sports medicine staff. And uh, to see him, you know, out there, you know, knocking into people and just being the physical thumper that he is um, was really cool to see. I also thought uh, Zach McLeod, we talked about Cameron Harris's leadership. I thought Zach just enjoyed being out there the other night as well and was trying to take on that, that, that similar leadership captain role. He did, and, and, and that's, I think he's very comfortable in, the, in that role and, and, you know, starts on our punt team and does a great job with that. You know, if we can get him to not volleyball spike a potential interception in the red zone, we'd, we'd, we'd be okay. But uh, it's so, we're so lucky to have the age and experience at linebacker as we do with, with, you know, Bradley and Zach, you know, replacing the guys that left a year ago. Quincy Roche transferred in from Temple and came out of that league as a leading sacker and an All-American and only sack of the night actually for the University of Miami that was logged was by him and that's no surprise to you but Hurricane fans sure like seeing that production. Yeah and I believe that they'll see more um, and, and sacks in general. UAB was they were not going to hold on to the football. I mean there was it was ball out stuff pretty quick uh, but the time that they did you know Quincy was there and there's a couple times not just Quincy but Jalen Phillips, Cam Williams, Jafari. I mean the quarterback was throwing the ball and and, and was getting hit in the back in the back so um, I was pleased with our pressure. I was pleased with our pass rush. I thought our guys were relentless. And again, that's where having that depth where we can continue to roll guys, I think really helps. Okay, it's Miami and Louisville coming up on Saturday. Big game from Cardinal Stadium. And when we come back, we'll have our breakdown segment. That's next right here on the Manny Diaz Show. It's now time for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. Coach, what do you have for us today? Well, Don, I figured you'd love this one. You know, we're going to look at some of the big guys up front. Appreciate um, that. When you run for 300 yards in three quarters, um, everyone knows Harris, Knighton, Chaney, those guys are really, really exciting backs. But somebody's got to be doing something in front of them to move some people and open up some holes. And some of the things that maybe it's hard to find on the TV copy, that I just wanted to point some guys out that are doing a great job doing their job. So first play we're going to look at is actually a really, really important play. This is the fourth down and one. And if you're going to go for fourth and one at your own 34-yard line, you've got to have some confidence that you can get some movement. Um, you know that with a guy like Derek King, you've got a, an extra running threat that the defense has to, to account for. So we're going to run inside zone right here. There's a couple of guys I really, really want to point out right here. Okay, First of all, watch Jared, watch the double team right here, to Jared Williams and DJ Scaife. Now this guy right now is lined up. See the hash mark? So he's lined up outside the hash mark. Watch where he ends up. Boom, great job, boom. So DJ starts on him. DJ takes the linebacker who tries to fill that hole. But watch Jared Williams finish the block and take that guy. Look how far off the hash mark. Remember, initially that guy was over here. So you talk about moving people, that's moving people. Now Will Mallory, blocking isn't just offensive alignment. Will Mallory's got a difficult block. He's got to cut this guy off from that gap. So Will gets his a hand inside, boom, right there. And look at the fight from Will. See how he's trying to get his hips leveraged to create that cutback lane for Cam. Now they've got a blitzer off the edge, but this is where Derek comes into play because Derek is reading him. 
And if Derek feels like that guy's going to come inside, Derek can pull the ball on the zone read right here. So watch right there. See how that guy has to chop his feet for just a half a count. So all of that has enabled Cam with great vision to put a foot in the ground and to see the hole that's created by Jared doing a great job with, with DJ, knocking the three technique out of there, and then Will Mallory cutting his man off backside. What made Cam's cut special, the only guy left that UAB has, they brought their safety down because it was fourth down and one. And right there, see how Cam starts to his left, puts a foot in the ground, and watch how the safety sees that hole. But Cam is already a step ahead of him. He sees that hole. And so once the safety chooses poorly, Cam's out of there, and there's no one left to get him. Big start to the game, really exciting. And again, great for Cam, but great for everybody up front to make it happen. All right, here's another one, too, I just want to show you, Don, because you'll, you'll love this. And I really want to point out again, Jared Williams. I thought both of our tackles really played well this game. Maybe the most difficult block for a tackle is to cut off what we call a four-eye. Anytime a defense tackle is lined up on the inside uh, shade of the offense tackle, we call that a four-eye technique. So he's trying to cut that guy off or mash that guy down so Cam Harris can run the ball right behind him. And watch what Big Jared does. This is our grad transfer from Houston. He's done a great job. Look at him get his great hand placement and then watch him run his feet. And then eventually the guy hops back outside, which is perfect because Cam is going right through here. DJ Scaife and Corey Gaynor do a phenomenal job there on the front side of sealing it. And guess what we've got again? We've got free access to the hash mark. So again, running straight downhill, which is what we wanted to do all night. What does number 50 have to do right here? He's got to make sure Derek doesn't have the ball. And by the time he does, it's a drag down by the ankle tack on this. This is early, early in the game, even before the fourth down. But you know what? These are the plays that early in the game, they may go for six or seven. Later in the game, these become the explosive plays. Coach Garen Justice, the offensive line coach, you mentioned him earlier in the show about what a great job he's doing improving these young men's technique, you see, especially with their hands and their steps. You can tell, yeah. And, and their confidence now after seeing this work during the course of the game. So here's, in essence, the same play from the other side. Okay, so now we're going to focus on John Campbell. You know, and again, I thought John Campbell played really, really well. He's got the same block. All right, so this time Jared's on the front side. He's over here. Scaife's got the one-on-one -on -one against these, this guy. And Usman and Corey are going to work to these two right here. Derek's going to read him, and we're trying to get the same thing. We're trying to get Cam Harris basically right down this hash mark. So, again, watch the block of John Campbell. He's really got the key block because if that guy can't get cut off, okay, he can really take away that running seam. And watch what John does. John just takes the guy and just mashes him back, 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 back. So really gets a stalemate with that guy. That guy's not able to make a play. And then watch front side. Really nice job. So Usman takes over the nose guard. And then watch Corey Gaynor come off right here to the second level and seal it. So instead of Cam taking this one down the hash mark, great vision by Cam being patient. And see that hole right there? So that's why you never know. Last time that hole was there, but John stalemates his guy. Now the hole is there. This is really good vision by Cam Harris. Watch that hole develop. Boom, he's, in out, he's out of the hole. And then we've got great blocking downfield from Will Mallory. The one that's really exciting is Jeremiah Payton getting after his guy. Watch Jeremiah Payton. This is a wide receiver. Watch him finish that cornerback right there. And now we're on to the last guy on the football field, which is a safety who dives at Cam's ankles, unfortunately, but gets Cam on the ground. So, again, that's how explosive running happens. Great blocking on the front level. And then committed blocking by tight ends, wide receivers, everybody making something happen here. Coach, when you talk about Usman and about getting to that second level, how much work do they spend, uh, how much time do they spend working together to get that timing down? Because that whole front looked like they were synchronized. That's, it, it ought to look like, like, the, like the Rockettes, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> they, all, they all step together. You know I mean? Just watch, you know, watch the first couple steps and their, and their feet moving together. And all you're trying to do is, is watch that guy hangs on to Corey and then just, boom, just move that guy off that hash mark like that. And just to be able to, be able to displace people, it is a team thing. And that's why you've got to have great um, communication between your offensive linemen. And remember now, UAB did not line up in this front with the four eyes and a 3-4. They didn't line up in this front one time the week before and barely ever last year. So this was all an adjustment on the fly from our players, which I was really proud of. 
This is going to be the touchdown here, Cam's second touchdown. And again, we're in a spread set right here. So what we've done, and it's third down right here. This is a great play call by Rhett Lashley. Third down, you know, everybody on UAB's team is thinking pass. Why are they thinking pass? Because, look, they're three over two over our receivers, and they're three over two over our wide receivers. Okay? Now, I ain't major in math, but I know this. We have five offensive linemen, and they've got five in the box. Okay? Which means we have a hat for all their hats. And the reason why we have that is because they are concerned about our throwing game out here on the outside. Okay, so we're going to hand the ball off because we've got a numerical advantage. But now they got someone's still got a block. We got to make something happen. So let's take a look and see why it becomes a touchdown. And again, I'm going to start with John Campbell. I thought his block on this on this play really was a key to getting in the end zone. Does a great job of getting into this guy. His guy tries to shed inside and play through a second gap and watch John just take him and remove him right there. Drive him back, drive him back, drive that guy. That is now, remember where that defensive end started. Look at the eye in Miami in the end zone, right? That's where he started. Watch where he ends up. He ends up all the way back there in the goal line. So that's the space that Cam Harris, remember, see that eye? That's the space that Cam Harris is bouncing into the end zone right there. He's able to cut back on the linebacker and his tenacity. We saw this in all of our scrimmages right there. That's a bad position for tackling from a linebacker standpoint. Cam's going to win and he just buries his way into the end zone. Great run, great blocking by the offensive line there. And then the last play, all right, Don, you know I got to show some defensive guys too, right? You have to, coach. Okay, but if we're going to if we're going to talk about, you know, winning the line of scrimmage, um, we got we got to call some guys out on defense as well because I really thought they got after um, UAB up front. UAB is a is an outside zone running football team. The key is penetration. Miami, the Miami 3-4 defense should always be predicated on penetration. What's cool about this play is I want you to watch the line right here. See how the ball is basically on a line? It's on the 25-yard line right here. And I want to let the play run for a second. Count the Miami Hurricanes that are on this side of the orange line about two seconds after the ball snapped. Watch this. That right there is pursuit. In fact... As the play ends, the only people who are not on that side of the line of scrimmage are our two corners who are both deep outside third players on this play. That's effort getting the ball. That's disruption. That's guys staying on their feet. There's not a hurricane on their feet. Um, look at Jared Harrison Hunt. Knock his man. He just knocked his man four and a half yards deep in the backfield. Look at Jalen Phillips knocking that offensive lineman. And so right now, I'll show you from a better camera angle here, We've got a little twist game between Jared and, and uh, Jade Silvera. But look at the where the running back has to run the ball right now. So we talk about U8, we talk about our offense line displacing people and moving people. Well, that's not displacing. That's no one's moving anybody right there. Jade's right there through the gap. Great job here by Zach McLeod staying on his feet. We got Sam Brooks. Watch Sam Brooks do a great job setting an edge on this block. Gilbert Frierson, watch Gilbert Frierson come in and edge the fullback right here. So what you're doing on defense is the opposite. You're condensing space. On offense, you're trying to make space and move people. On defense, you're trying to condense space. And that's exactly what's going on right here. Everyone on their feet, everyone to the ball, and then multiple guys getting in. Amari Carter jumping to the pile, Zach jumping on. And again, that's what you want. Intimidating defense. Running back gets up. He's got six guys standing on with a U on the side of their helmet. That's how the Miami Hurricanes should have it. Eight men in the backfield when they try to hand the ball off. Quick question, Coach. Defensive coordinators make play calls, too. And that was an example that you had the twist on the defensive front that put Jade right in a position to slow that thing down. That's right, yeah. And, and part of the design is that Jared can penetrate right here and Jade can wrap around. It kind of messes up their block. You give this backside guy, want, he wants to cut block a lot of times on outside zones. So you're running away from the cut block. See how he's trying to block Jade and Jade's quickness. That's why we want fast, agile defensive linemen at the University of Miami is what we've always been predicated on. So this little two-man game right here like this, it kind of messes up their count. And as you can see, he is actually, in, in fact, blocking Jay to where he wants to go. And then a great left shoulder tackle. Remember we talked about last week, tackling without the head in the tackle. Great left shoulder profile tackle. Run your feet on contact and watch the running back end up on his back, which is really, that's pretty good looking defense right there. All right, that was the breakdown segment once again with head coach Manny Diaz. Thank you, coach. Thank you, Don.